All right. Um. So I'm. I'm. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um. My name's uh, Teresa Robel, and uh, I. I'm a partner in uh, Princeton eBikes, located confusingly in uh, Lawrence, New Jersey, but close enough. And uh, if, at any point, if anyone can't hear me, I'm going to try to talk loud. I don't always do that. And he is somewhat diminished hearing, so if you can make it louder, if you talk louder, it would be helpful. I'll Thank do the. I'll you. do Thank my best. Back. I'll do my best. Thank you. Not and 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 if you can't, you have questions or whatever, let me know. And I'll definitely at the end, you know, whatever questions you have, I'll open it up. Um, We've been in existence, just so you know, a little bit about us um, since well, March of, 19, of 2021. So we're heading into our fourth year. Um, we're a dedicated e-bike shop. So all we sell is e-bikes. And the three partners, my par two partners and myself, we actually are all, this is another career for us. We're all volunteers. And so um, we only have one and we're volunteer operated except for our mechanic who, um, who it we need who we pay um he because he's, he's very important to us he puts together all the bikes he checks them over if we service everything we sell and the reason we're volunteer based is that 100 percent of our profits go to the boys and girls club so about 20 percent of every bike we donate to the boys and girls club welcome welcome how are you Good. Good. i'm teresa just saying i'm from princeton e-bikes uh located in lawrence and a dedicated electric bike shop and all our profits about 20 percent of Every bike goes to the Boys and Girls Club since we're most of us are volunteers um, and all of us are bikers. And it's definitely a labor of love. And we're really happy to see you all here today. Um, I'm going to um, and definitely there's time for questions. And if you have a question you need to ask along the way, you know, feel free. Otherwise, at the end, we'll go through it. Does was that how many of you here? You know, does anyone here have any bike now? No, or have you, how many, just a show of hands, have ever ridden an electric bike, just so I know? A couple of you? Okay. It's city bike. The city bike. Okay, awesome. Well, what we're, I'm going to do is put um, electric bikes today very briefly in the context of the history of bikes. Like, And so talk, talk a little bit about where bikes came from, and then mostly talk about electric bikes, where they are today, and where's, where the future is. Um, so there we go. And be, any questions before I get started? Okay. Can you hear me over there? This is like, this is yelling for me. I know I don't tend to have, so, you know, I uh, get me mad and I'll talk louder, you know? Um, so here is, let's get into a real brief history of bikes and biking. So one, this is one of the first bikes in Germany. Wasn't called a bike at the time, 1817. Anyone tell me what's missing here? Yeah, no brakes, no chain, no wheel. I mean, no pedals, yeah, right? It, oh yeah, yeah, that's definitely not any of that. I think the big deal here is that there's no pedals and no brakes, as you accurately pointed out. Um, what happened at the time in Germany is that there was an agricultural, um, just a drought, a lot of horses died and uh, they needed a, what, and they, a way, this was supposed to be kind of a horse substitute. Um, but your brakes were your free feet, your pedals were your feet, et cetera. Basically a Flintstones bicycle. Yeah. Absolutely. Like Yabba Dabba Doo, a Flintstones bicycle. Exactly. Um, so moving forward about 40 years, we can see that pedals have been added to this machine. Um, still not really called a bike, but a predecessor to a bike. Not a comfortable ride. It, had, it was wooden, obviously no shocks, metal around the wheels. So that's why it was called the bone shaker. And this picture, by the way, um, was taken in Princeton. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So now I think probably most of you are, have seen bikes like this before. I mean, called the, the penny farthing. Um, still have the brakes up there on the wheel. I mean, uh, the pedals up there on the wheel. But this, what they called, um, and this was 1886. Um, this looks more like, um, I think, this, what they call the safety bicycle, looking more like the bike that we're used to, right? I mean, it has a chain, so you get more energy usage from the pedals. Um, and 
the reason they called it the safety bicycle, I think, is pretty obvious if you look at what's next to it. I mean, which no one wants to fall off a bike, but if you're going to fall off either of these, I know which one I would choose. Um, and interestingly, by the way, um, like Susan B. Anthony, kind of one of the leaders of the women's movement, called um, the bicycle one of the best, most biggest inventions, welcome, in uh, in history because it gave women freedom at a time when they didn't have that much. It actually had a great impact on changing women's clothing because um, they uh, wanted needed clothing to be more comfortable on a bicycle. So um, the uh, safety bicycle was really quite, kind of a big deal. By the way, the marketing for that bicycle, um, a Boston manufacturer said, it's an ever saddled horse, which eats nothing. I don't think that would go too far today, but it worked at the time. So that's so when so right around now we'll see is when the first e-bike shows up electric bike on paper. Um, lot, here is an example of a patent. You can see the motor is here in the middle um, where the pedals are. Um, there's a battery, a huge battery up there. Um, but most of these designs, then there were quite a few patents um, around this time, like over about 120 years ago, um, stayed on paper. Didn't go any farther. Anyone want to wager a guess why? Any thoughts? Yeah. But as batteries were very heavy. That's definitely why they didn't really come about until 20, 30 years ago. Now they use lithium batteries. But any other reasons for at that? Uh, yeah. The key reason at that point um, was the advent of the automobile. And so that is really why electric bikes started to get going, but they really didn't go anywhere because the automobile came along. And just to really emphasize that point, um, in 1899, 1.2 million bikes were sold in the US. Just nine years later, the Model T made its debut. And at, at that, and the next year after that in 1909, only 160,000 bikes were sold. So um, the automobile really just decimated the biking business for a while. So we really have to move forward about 100 years to uh, when the e-bike boom begins. And really, this is just a mini boom at this point. And you can see here two of the models, two of the first models of e-bikes that came along. And to your point, um, these were really technology, tech, changes in technology are what got e-bikes going. Um, those lead acid batteries were really he heavy, just weren't practical on a bike. So the advent of lighter lithium batteries made a big difference, and also sensors and micro, micro electronics. Um, in these bikes and in bikes we sell and in all electric bikes, really, there are sensors that tell how fast you pedal and how and torque, how hard you're pedaling. And that allows these bikes to be the, the motor to pedal, have pedal assist technology, meaning as you're pedaling, you know, if you, there may be four levels of power. And if you're on the lowest level of power as you're pedaling, it might be like, just one person's pushing you behind your back. And if you use the highest level, maybe four or five people are pushing you, but th that's what those sensors are doing for you. So actually, actually, you know, before I get to this next slide, um, just to tell you a lot has happened as technology improved in the last 20 years. And the US is a little bit behind China and Europe. So China is the leader in the manufacture, in the um, sales, and in the actual on the ground riding of e-bikes um, in the country. Um, Europe, Netherlands, and Germany in particular are huge in e-bikes. I think I just read that this last year, um, e-bike sales in Germany has now exceeded regular bike sales. So there are more than half the new bikes sold are electric bikes in Germany. And it's pretty obvious if you, if you go to Europe and the US, is um, behind, but really catching up. And that's kind of the story that we want to tell the rest of the time we're here today. So here's a, right now, and this is the, what the US e-bike market looks like. The estimations, and we know how accurate they can be, but the estimations are that growth will be 10 to 15% a year through the rest of the decade. Uh, we can see that they're at, you know, around six to 700 million in sales um, as of 2020, and it's already up to over 2 billion today. Um, and we're gonna talk, they talk about belt drive and chain drive. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, um, and 
Any questions at all before we get into a little bit more about exactly what e-bikes are? No? Okay. So here is a typical e-bike. I think there are many different kinds and we'll, we'll take a look in a minute, but this is like a regular cruiser bicycle, right? And this is like, what makes an electric bike an electric bike? Really it's a bike like any other bike. This one happens to be, I think, a nine speed bike. There are nine speeds on the handlebars with brakes and two wheels and everything else you might expect. But um, the two things that make an e-bike an e-bike are the battery. And you can see the battery here is very obvious where it is, but um, as bikes go up in price and they will, batteries are often integrated into the, into the frame so that you can't see them. And then there's a motor. In this case, the, the motors could be either here in the middle called a mid motor or in the rear, basically a hub motor. Um, we have both types in our shop. So you know, anybody who comes in, we typically recommend they try both. They have a mid motors are more costly. They work entirely by sensors. Um, the rear motor um, has sensors, but it to see how fast and how hard you're pedaling, but it also works by spinning the back wheel, which gives it a little bit different feel than a mid motor. Um, the three classes of bikes, which they, um, there's the basics, which you can easily go out there and prove me wrong because people keep tweaking this, but basically a class one bike and a class three bike, they, neither of them have throttles. A class one bike, um, the, the motor kicks off when you reach 20 miles an hour and have a safety feature. Doesn't mean you can't go 60 miles an hour down a hill by your own power, but the motor kicks off at 20 miles an hour. Class three, the motor kicks off at 28 miles an hour. We really don't see a whole lot of those. And then a class two bike has a throttle. So that has a pedal assist, but always also has a throttle. If you, any of you have seen like food delivery people in New York and Philadelphia, um, you'll see that basically they're being treating those bikes as mini mopeds because um, they're only using a throttle. Um, the, uh, and nowadays we find that um, in the past, the past that I knew, that would have been called a girl's bike. But girls and boys bikes have been renamed and as um, low step and high step bikes. And I think the reason for that is that I'd say two thirds of the people who come in to buy a bike from us want a low step. Um, and a, so that's, that's the world today as we know it. So um, any questions about, about kind of what we have there, the bikes? Yeah. What's the legality of riding class one, two, three? That's a great question. Like, how much time do you have? No, I'm te te not teasing. Um, it's so class one bikes typically in almost everywhere, it's legal to tr to ride them everywhere. You know, um, so the laws. What we recommend to people is that they go online to look at the because it it's a kind of a wild west and it varies state by state. Um, class two legal to ride everywhere too, for the most part. Class three, it really varies. They don't have a throttle. Um, it's just, and some places don't like throttle bikes. Um, but generally, so class three, they're saying that you need to have like some kind of a license. However, we tried and tried and tried it. That's the law that was just passed a couple of years ago. But we have tried and tried to talk to the DMV and they just don't want to talk about it. And the fact is that people don't know the difference when they ride a bike and you're riding a bike. No one, if people ride responsibly, no one's going to, they don't see the difference between a class one and a class three. So it's, it's challenging. It's a great question. Yeah, I think New York City has something like that in their bike pass. I've been hearing that before. Right, exactly. It's a, it, but right. typically like a, you can pretty much don't have to worry about it, but it is a good there are certain things, for example, um, mountain bike, e-mountain bikes, a lot of resorts, places don't let e-mountain bikes on trails at all. So it's always good to look up the rules of where you are. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, unfortunately, this has a lot of similarities to the, uh, forgive me for getting the hunting rifle versus assault rifle. It's just the plastic cladding or wood cladding. I think if your bike, if your e-bike looks like a little moped, like a motorcycle, and you're driving around as such, you're probably going to get in trouble. But if it looks like a bicycle and you're treating it as a bicycle, pedally or not, right. I don't think you're going to get in trouble. Pretty much most places, unless it's a bespoke, hey, you arrived here to go on these bike trails and you show up with an e-bike, 
if it looks like a bicycle and you don't say anything, if you sit there on low power assist, if you're pedaling with everyone else, they, if they see it and say, we've got these problems, get out. I mean, listen, but if they don't notice, they probably won't notice your hair. But if you show up with one that's very expensive and looks like a little motorcycle, if you're sitting there going 28 miles an hour right. the entire time, they're going to say, get out of here with your motorcycle. Uh, I think that's true. And I think that's one reason. So there are a couple of things just to address that. One is that it's up to everyone to be responsible. And, and, and two is that we don't sell any of those motorcycle type looking bikes yeah. for that reason. The problems with these two in New York is a lot of bikes are both pedal and power assisted right. really don't follow the rules very well. They go right through lights, go wrong way on one way streets. I've seen this. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know this what? This has nothing to do with e-bikes. It's that bikes in general uh, don't follow the traffic rules on I think that as I think that's true. I mean, I mean, it's absolutely true. Yeah, New York can do with your bikes or anybody else's. But but, but as people, but as people, but as and and, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this when we get to the challenges because this is a challenge, absolutely, of the future, both the regulations and um, bicycle safety and bicycle bicycle courtesy. I see these as some of the biggest challenges right now that we have. Um, yeah, um, great questions. Thank you. So. Types of electric bikes that exist. Um, what you know, the hybrid is the typical that you see the most probably. Um, the the fat tire bikes good for sand, snow, and we see people um, just tell you in this room. I've never had not to be gender stereotyped, but we never had a woman buy one of those fat tires yet. Some people just like the way they look. We don't have a lot of snow here anymore, but anyway, the road bike um, these. Traditionally, we see people who buy those who are just avid road bikers. They can't keep up necessarily with their friends anymore. Those are really kind of stealthy bikes. They tend to have very small motors. They're really expensive. Um, folding um, e-bikes. Um, we've had sold them. People take them on boats on in campers across the country. A lot of you know a lot of people have been using e-bikes on their campers where they don't want to have a car. It's not a really a car substitute, but if they want to be able to get around near their campsite and don't want to have to, you know, have as much pe pedal power. And cargo bikes um, are really fast growing trend. Um, we've sold them to small businesses, to people who want to take their kids to school, to, yeah. So, and then the one, the one that's missing on there is the mountain bike. I didn't include it because I was running out of space and around here, it's not that popular because of the terrain. I'm noticing in these pictures, the cargo, is almost looking like a fat tire in regards to its in regards to its uh, tube size. You know, um, it's it's going to probably be a little bit bigger. It's a mid a mid size. Um, it varies on the brand. Okay. But the, but also they have a heavier payload. They need to because of more people or more stuff. So those are using like BMX stuff. Oh, that's getting a little granular for me. I'm the I'm that's a that's a. I see an off road size. I'm seeing an off road size. Um. Right they go everywhere. It's not going to be a fat tire, but it's going to be kind of in the middle. Yeah, an all-purpose tire, I'd say. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, all right. So, you know what? Before I get to that, anyone want to um, tell me what you think? Could be, we talked a little bit about the disadvantages, and we'll get back to them, or the concerns. Um, advantages of e-bikes in your perception? Or thoughts on that? I can't imagine something better for urban. Urban delivery, for sure. Okay. Yeah. People just getting around in an urban environment. Yeah, they, they don't think they're easy to maneuver around vehicles and get to other spots where yep. the car might be tough and, you, and traffic jams are much less of an issue if you're a capital driver. Right, so, right. So they have their place for some people, certainly. Absolutely. Parking in an urban environment as well. I mean, another, you know, and, and, and yeah, and I would tell you think outside the urban environment because we're not urban. You know, we're here. We are selling only to suburban users, pretty much, and we've sold over four hundred bikes since we've been been in business. So I, I have a car, so, but I um, uh, I also have a bike and I, I'm trying to use it every day. And I live in Hamilton Township, New Jersey, right outside of Trenton. It's not a very centralized place. In fact, there's no downtown Hamilton. So right. If you look at the Wikipedia for our town, first thing is there's no downtown, kind of weird. Right. Didn't even notice it earlier. But I've been able to in theory, do everything I would need to do besides go to my job, which is out of town, right. with my normal bicycle, with a uh, e-bike. Right. I can't imagine a need for a car outside of the train and right. things out of town, but 
you right. can do most of everything with a bike or e-bike. Right. In my town, which is not like no other towns that are smaller or more centralized, probably you can do lots of even easier. Like yeah. something like Princeton is even easier. Well, here's in our experience. Well, generally, I what we see is the main advantages of e-bikes. Obviously, as people are using them more and more for errands or as a car replacement, or even just um, you know they're good for deliveries, small businesses, taking kids to school, whatever. Good for the environment. Um, we've seen that improved physical fitness, and I'm not going to go through all the studies here. I think that you, sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, they're a cheater bike, and that's just absolutely not true. I mean, if you for the, if you want to just, you know, get one with a throttle and never use the pedals, that's possible. But I'd say that virtually everyone that we sell bikes to, um, they're buying, they are doing it, they may have health issues, or they, for example, are riding with someone else who you know, might have a regular bike and they want to keep up and they want us to be able to ride together. So we, you know, we have a big segment that I call the equalizer where one person doesn't have an e-bike and one person does, and then they can ride together again. We find that, and in terms of the improving physical fitness, people ride farther. They tend to go farther. They tend to go on terrain that they expand the type of terrain they can go on because, for example, going up and down the Saddle and Mountains, if you're not an avid biker, can be challenging with an e-bike that's very doable. Um, and we've, we've, for example, we've sold bikes to people who live in Pennington that bike into Princeton for work or, and, and, you know, they, they can, uh, you use a lot more, um, e-power on the way to work, not get sweaty and then get more exercise, use more pedal power on the way home. So, um, those are really the, so we see a lot of advantages um, to e-bikes and kind of the data bears that out. Um, okay, and really when people come down and test ride them, cause we have a big test riding area and I, you know, people, well, this is the biggest reason, whoops, is, let me see, is fun. And you know, it really puts a smile on people's face. So there you go, there's my test rider. And here's some examples, um, happen to be our customers, but I think they're pretty representative of segments that are out there. Um, this woman in the, on the red bike in the top um, is commuting from Lawrence to Hamilton. Um, now she was using a car every day. Now she's, when the weather, most of the time she's using her bike. So back to the environmental reason. This was our first customer, two avid bicyclists who just can fit all three of those kids on the cargo bike and they're dropping them off to school. I said to grandma's house with their first try with that bike as they went a 40 mile round trip, which I thought was pretty admirable with three kids in the back. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, here, this is uh, a customer that had shattered his leg three years skiing, three years of not skiing, certainly not biking, and um, doesn't have the knee range, um, the range of motion anymore. So, but um, an e-bike makes it a lot easier for him to ride. And then the equalizer up there, um, <laughs> the, uh, the, again, now they can ride together. We had one avid cyclist, one not so avid cyclist, and we've seen many, many people, friends, partners, whatever, who can now ride together um, because of e-bikes. So, cause you don't have to have the same level of, of, of fitness. So the future, you know, what's the future look like? And I think that some of the future is, uh, well, we'll talk about the challenges in a minute. So lighter bikes, we're talking um, certainly materials all the time. Um, there, there's all sorts of research being done to make bikes lighter and lighter. And we've already seen that somewhat because one of the disadvantages of e-bikes are they are heavier. I mean, the average bike we have is 45, 50 pounds. Um, and that's because, you know, the battery can weigh seven pounds, the motor weighs something. And so it's, so they're going to be lighter in the future. Um, the batteries are all ranges are already getting longer. I'd say the typical bike that we have could go, you know, with relatively flat, you know, terrain and not too much, um, motor power. You could go 50 or 60 miles. Of course, it, it really, it really varies, but they're talking about, in the future, and I just read about this somewhere, I think in Asia, 
battery swapping stations. Don't look for that around here or anytime soon, but that's just way into the future where you just swap out a battery. You get users up, you can go long distance. Wireless charging technology is something that's being worked on. Yeah. Uh, a battery that comes out is useful for battery swapping, but that whole useful battery is way to work. Right. You can use up most of it, probably you can sit there and charge it at the desk. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Wheeling your bike in, you charging your desk, might get you some looks. But having a thing in your hand about this thing, you go plug in your speed, okay, your desk is hot. So. That's absolutely true. And every bike that we ha sell, um, you can take off. I mean, you can take off the battery, which you want to do, for example, in the winter anyway, because you don't like it being a cold, getting cold and sitting outside. So, yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, there, there are more e-bike models that provide user flexibility. I mean, cargo bikes, for example, um, you know, you might see start seeing cargo bikes that have uh, in cities in particular FedEx or UPS logos on them. And they're more and more for business uses. Um, Government incentives, uh, the federal government had an incentive for uh, um, to buy an e-bike. Um, that didn't pass, but now there's a whole dozens of incentives depending on certain cities, certain um, states to buy to buy an e-bike, you know, tax credits, that kind of thing. And they many of them get used up every year and then get renewed. So it's always worth looking into that. I know that one is in the works in New Jersey, um, not not operational right now. And then smarter bikes with sensors that can, you know, tell you the terrain and how far you're going. And I mean, AI in e-bikes isn't really much of a thing yet, but in the future, um, it will be. The challenges, I think, that um, a lot of the challenges you um, already touched upon: um, legislation, local laws as to the, you know, where can you take the class one, class two, class three bikes. Uh, those are changing all the time. Um, also, battery safety. I think that's a obviously we've heard a lot about fires and batteries, and a lot of that um, occurred really with jerry rigged. Most of it, almost all of it, um, bikes where people would take a bike and take a battery that wasn't safety tested and kind of meld them together. Building old packs, building packs not having balanced cells and so on and so forth. Exactly. Not having proper thermal protection, infusing and all that. Right. Yet. So what we we only recommend, whether you get a bike from us or anywhere, is always to get a bike. First of all, that's that the battery comes with the bike, not to be. And also nowadays there is, and I, I don't. There's a certificate. What they're doing is they're certifying. And I'll get the. Uh, yeah, UL there. So there's a UL, it's called UL 2840 standard that tests e-bike batteries, chargers, and motors. And all the best brands are doing that now and they should be certified and those are going to be safe. And then if you would never, ever, ever want to recommend getting a battery that didn't come with the bike. So if you ever get a replacement battery, it needs to be the one that's certified for the bike. And if that occurs, you know, things, things should be fine. Of, um, battery recycling, like uh, every shop should allow people to come in and then there we, we can we recycle old batteries. Yes. How long do uh, e-bikes typically last? I'm sorry, the bike before makes an overhaul versus the battery. Um, does the battery typically last the life of the bike without being maybe done? I mean, I got I got a bike from the 60s and it's supposed to be fine, but I guess it's usually probably. Well, a lot of that will depend on, you know, a, that a lot of, a, I would say generally, yes, but a lot of it depends on how people use their bikes. Um, a battery, a typical battery, um, they say will last around 500 to 750 full charges. And that's, of course, hugely varies by person in terms of how long that would be. But we would say a battery often would last five, six years. Um, also, a lot of our, our main vendor often those promotions where they offer free batteries, you know, thing, which usually, which is a considerable promotion because they cost four or $500. So, but yeah, that's a great question. I mean, um, um, educating consumers about bicycle safety. I mean, I think that is a, cha a, main, a major challenge in which we talked about. It gets at all the issues you were talking about, of going too fast, whether it's an e-bike or a regular bike, not paying attention to traffic laws not making room for pedestrians. So a big challenge really is um, building better bike infrastructure that both allows for bike safety and allows for both pedestrians and bikers to share the world out there. So um, 
Any questions about any of that at all? Um, yeah. Battery is certified. Right. I'm sure it doesn't continue to eliminate the chance of a fire. What is the risk? Because the risk, I mean, the. About a lot of people. Right. We haven't heard. None of those that I can tell, none, I think, are from the UB certified batteries. They're almost, I haven't read of anywhere it's from manufacturers that people bought a, a certified manufacturer with the battery that belongs to that bike. Yeah, there've been all, all those fires, you know, we've seen in New York where, yeah, people, it's tragic, tragic, have lost their lives. It's generally, and it's unfortunate because these are people that really need their bikes to for a living um, that are, Jerry rigged and not bought, or they're extremely cheap, you know, on, online. Yeah. So I was about to say, I think a lot of those cases are the uh, companies in China or other regions that are trying to put together a full bike, everything for four ninety nine, right? Including and, and that's including the marketing budget that can't do that Instagram ad. And, and the fact so. is that we get solicitations from those people all the time. The average cost and getting to negative oh, another challenge. The average, our bikes range, there are some for a thousand, but more typically our bikes will be, you know, 1800, 1500, 2000, $2,500. So they're more expensive than a lot on average than a, a basic bike. And, but you're paying for safety, you're paying for um, just reliability. So I think the chance, I mean, I wouldn't want to be selling anything to anyone providing it that I didn't feel 100% confident with the safety. So. Or fire. Right, right. But you know, and most of those are messenger bikes that are just put together, jerry rigged, and put together. Um, they don't fo they don't follow safety standards okay. at all. Those are the exact consumers that four ninety nine bike. Right. So right. It's not surprising that those are the people that have a problem. We don't recommend ever buying a bike that's not UB certified, and. That's just, and, and if you do that, then you really solve that problem. Yeah. Bike that is certified or the battery? The battery, the battery is certified that uses, uh, from a reputable manufacturer that, and and if a reputable manufacturer, all of their electric bikes sh should have batteries that meet that standard. And then that's not a problem. Cause yeah, I mean, that is, it's a significant problem, but a, a completely addressable one. It's a good question. Any other questions? So unfortunately, like I had, there was only one and I, this somehow lost in translation with the tech folks here. Um, the only example, because this is an AI conference that I could find on AI and e-bikes so far, and I had a little video, but I can't show it on here because it's not working with their tech. But there's one company called Utopia, And basically you'll see that little computer on the handlebars and you can click it and tell it, you know, this. if you're in San Francisco, let's say, design me a 35 mile ride that has, you know, 200, 2000 feet of elevation change and goes around some water and then brings me back to this point. And, uh, and that's what it'll do. It'll say, okay, you know, make sense. And in case, you know, make sure you look on your left to see the great view, et cetera. So that's just kind of an intro to AI in e-bikes, but it really isn't out there yet. I you know? imagine there's also, there would be a way to, program it so I would like to burn fifteen hundred calories this ride. Right. Adjust the uh adjust the assistance accordingly. And then I can see that totally being something you can calculate. Basically. I think that's I think absolutely you're gonna see more and more integrating of kind of smart features like that with biking. Uh, hopefully not ones that are going to interfere with people keeping their eyes on the road. <laughs> but that's but yeah, because I think with the AI and we certainly have to balance um utility with safety. When you're on a moving vehicle. Yes, sir. Uh, I came in late, so this was already addressed. I apologize. Yeah. But what percentage of the e-bikes that you're seeing out there have a dependence on cloud services for their operation? Because personally, that is something I would very much prefer to avoid. Well, none of we one only one model that we sell, and we sell almost none of them. I mean, and you say our shop is it's 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 all e-bikes, so we're dedicated e-bikes, all our profits go to the Boys and Girls Club, by the way, we're because uh, the founders are volunteers, and um, they don't. They're not cloud-based at all. 
Th there's one bike called the Go Cycle, which is a foldable bike. It's kind of a cool bike. It was designed by a um, McLaren, like Formula One designer. And that is has a cloud-based operation. And I honestly, I feel like it's kind of a pain. Um, none of our other bikes do. They're like regular bikes. I mean, you can have apps that you can sync the computer with and get different features, but that's not really a cloud-based operation. It's between the bike and the phone and not the phone. And it's it's between the bike and the phone. The operation, it does not operational. Okay with that, but it's, yeah. it's optional. It's 100% optional. Yeah, definitely optional, for sure. You see the same stuff like he's talking about? Rental bikes. Uh, yes. Uh, because they, so they, can, so they can know where it is and immobilize it if you don't pay for your rental or whatever. That's Excellent. what you see a lot of that. That's yeah, true. That's fair, that's fair, right? It's a little different. It's, right? it's a that's different situation. You that is rental bikes. Right. I, I yeah. have heard what he's talking about on made ones made for consumers where like, so it's not stolen. There's like a key to unlock it or like to start it or something. Okay. And the operation to turn it on requires you to like talk to Requires that they talk to your phone or maybe just for initial setup, but that initial setup needs to go out to cloud services, which right. won't exist in 15 years because that company's kept right. Um So then you have this thing with wheels and a battery that in 2024 can move forward, but in 2034, right. no longer can move forward because someone turned off some silicon five right. miles away. Yep. Yeah, just and you, it's yeah. not even that sorry. theoretical. There was a bike called the Man Man Move, I think. Right, they just went out and they just went out of business. Yeah, they yeah. went out of business and bikes stopped working. You know, right. It's not like a regular bike where, like, oh, I can't get service anymore. No, no, it locked up and it couldn't do anything. Right, right. That, that was that work. was a ridiculous situation. Absolutely. And all of our, I mean, the bikes that we sell, the brands that we've researched, that's not a situation. They're like regular bikes with a motor and a battery, you yeah. know, that's no, it. And, and, and they're not, and they're not attached to, um, the cloud. Yeah, I didn't mean to harp on it, but it's not theoretical. Oh, oh no, it, it is not theoretical. Like the van that that left thousands of people high and dry. Yes, that situation. Enough, Absolutely. I don't know who was that one, but it's at least one e bike where the company either went out or maybe they were rental bikes and they got rid of the whole thing and just dumped them surplus. Right. And you can't use them. But some so, so some enterprising young fellow made a replacement board to, to shove into them instead of the original electronics, which totally eliminates all the issues. Interesting. So there are ways around it if somebody wants to sit and maybe write rapid patrol or code or what have you. I think you're all right. I know. And I think. Recycle bikes that are getting dumped, but about buying one. Right. Uh, and, 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 and you know, to, and I think, I think what you're, I think what you're doing here too, is you're bringing up a very good point, which I didn't mention in the challenges, but it is one. It's the and which we've tried to address, and I think most good bike shops have and will. Which is that I mean, if you think back a hundred years ago to the wild west of cars, you know there were so many brands out there, and most of those don't exist anymore. Now it's a little bit, which is one reason that not out of self interest, go buy your bike from another bike shop, but don't buy a bike online. I mean, we just that you don't know the brand is whatever. We just there's so many of them out there. A lot of bike shops won't service them. And if they're not around tomorrow, you're stuck. So go with a reputable brand. That has, and that's what that we did a lot of research to make sure. Like one of our brands, Gazelle, is um, they, they're Dutch. They've been making bikes since the 1880s, you know, 90s, since the very beginning. Um, and they're going to keep on doing it. But it is the wild west of biking. So you have to be careful so of e-biking. Well, imports are basically impossible to get certain parts for. Yes, for exactly. Which is why we don't service them. I mean, exactly. what we you only service, we Our only, service. and it's really typical for bike shops that only, we only service the brands we sell Makes because sense. we can't, we can't commit to doing, and we don't want to, anyone to get hurt. You know, sure. we, you know, Absolutely. our mechanic is trained on the brands we sell. And I think that's typical. So it's not, if you go out there and buy a brand ABC, nobody's heard of, it's not going to be easy to get it fixed. Yeah. But, uh, but it's it's kind of it's an interesting industry because 10, 20 years from now, a lot of these brands aren't going to exist anymore. You know, it won't only be man move, but there'll be a lot of them. So um, other these are great questions and I really appreciate your interest. Other typically we like to have some bikes here, but we didn't take for people to try. But we didn't have the room today. Belt versus chain. What you see? Oh, okay. That's a that's a great question. I have a belt drive bike. I got one. I, I, we we love belt drive bikes. So I've ridden it almost every day since. It's, it's let me go back. 
yeah, so so our Gazette, this is our Dutch bike. This is the lowest end, by the way. The higher end bike, so this is a has a traditional chain, but there's a Gazelle C8, which is a higher end, higher end model. Um, on the higher end model, just to tell you what a this is a kind of the lowest of the Gazelle models because it has the battery here. So once you get the battery into the into the body, into the post, it gets more balanced. It's sleeker looking. Um, it has a regular chain. Um, what one of the biggest future, which I should have mentioned, trends in biking is our belt drives, and they're amazing. I mean, they don't wear out, they don't fall off, they don't get your hands greasy because well, you don't have to. There's really main, they're maintenance free, so um, they're fantastic. We think, and that's the trend. I mean, I think the re only reason there aren't more of them now is that just for cost reasons. Yes, sir. Do the belts wear out though? What's the what's the um, so no they, really they do wear out nope, in a long term. I think they take like fifty percent more time to wear out than a chain, and they're like double the price, but it's like twenty bucks versus twenty bucks. Right. You get a ton more time out of it and zero maintenance. Right. That right. extra twenty bucks for the belt every few years. Uh, look, I, I, I bring mine because it's a belt drive normal uh, bike every day since last July or last August. Uh, I would pay that twenty dollars extra for that belt. So every month. Like it's yeah. totally worth it. We have two right now. We have two belt drive bikes. I anticipate more. That's the direction. And in three years in business, we haven't had any changed any belts yet. So yeah, I, it's, it's funny you could say twice as long as a chain. And this is, and I apologize my my experiences with e bikes. I only do acoustic out of the way. So, right, right, right. But uh, it seems like I used to have the chain used to last like five years, and now I'm going through a chain every year. So one of two things has happened. Mm -hmm. Either the power I'm generating has gotten so staggeringly more powerful that I'm wearing these chains out, or they're making them considerably worse than they used to. I'm sure it's the first one. <laughs> yes, you know I'm going to take that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the answer. Now buy something a little more great than No, no, I'm not taking that. Probably less, actually. I'm more on the roads than I used to be in the past, so there's probably less grit getting on that chain. Yeah, I, I can't. I, 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 I would. I don't have the answer to that. I mean, I would I certainly, have, you, yeah, right? but, but, um, let's hope, let's hope recommend. that it's the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Other, um, questions. Yeah. Does belt drive have the same variation in, uh, drive ratios? The, the, um, yeah, I think that's, what's your so answer? I'm going to. The yeah. answer is typically no, but also can be, uh, as my understanding, and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, pretty much every propel drive is going to be coupled with an internal hub. Yes, it will. It will. Um, and unlike most uh, bikes that are chain drive, you'll have like 21 speeds per common one. Right. You're not going to have one that's nearly that high in the belt drive because it's all fit up. So right. you're going to see probably up to 10 speed for probably 8 or 7 speed, which is a lot less than 21, but you do, you know, those are typically enough speeds to get through most of yeah, uh, and, so and, the and that, that is the lowest and the highest. I do, wide. I do think they are, or they can be. I think on the lower end, they're typically not as wide as a chain driven bike. You're going to get uh, more bang for the buck in terms of ratios yeah. uh, and, for chain versus belt. Right. But, and I'm and I'm probably not going to get too, I would let that's getting a little more granular. I would say you should chat amongst yourselves on that one after, <laughs> after the fact, because that's a, a good question. But they, what I can confirm confirm though is that they're always offered with an internal hub so basically I mean and you can't really see it here this is a belt drive like right? see there's the belt drive there's the internal hub so all the gearing and everything is protected in the back yeah not to oh, sorry, sorry. Tell you. no 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 it's important it's so just that's kind of a camp cassette type thing like the traditional three-speed hubs were like right 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 exactly but yeah I mean I think that right that's 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 actually Beyond my knowledge, when it comes to like gear ratios and stuff like that, other. And I read this and I did feel it. A belt drive, because of the internal hub, is slightly less efficient than the chain drive. But from a human perspective, you might be able to notice it if you really are trying right. to go for it. If you have a motor attached, no one will notice. Right. 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 That's absolutely true. I think. Um, other other questions? Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm Seven speeds kind of amazing. I think what happens is when you're looking at the buying e-bikes, people are buying them sometimes for different reasons, and they're not necessarily looking for kind of those 
it depends. The technical questions that was for most people are less so, well, for bikes in general, but less so than let's say the avid um, road acoustic, as you call it, road bike <laughs> rider. Yeah. Um, 